In the last eight years, I've published in one of the top 10 journals in my field, language and linguistics. My papers have got over 500 citations, where according to the journal Nature, 50% of all papers never get cited at all. And in the last four years, I've worked with over 850 PhD students and researchers, helping them publish papers to the point where in the last 12 months, our clients have been publishing papers once every two weeks. So in this video, I will compress these eight years of research paper experience into less than 20 minutes of brutally honest research paper writing advice that will help you to publish three or more papers every single year in Q1 journal. Strive for less and you'll achieve more. This might sound counterintuitive, but please hear me out on this. Normally you're told to set big, bold, audacious goals and the more goals you have, the better because the more you can achieve and also the more tasks and goals you're focusing on right now, the more productive you might feel because you're checking them off your to-do list. But the fact is that there are only 24 hours in a day and you only have so much energy. So the more things you're engaged in, the less likely you are to actually accomplish any of them or do a really good job on them. To illustrate this, this water in this jar represents the time and energy that you have to devote to pursuing your academic goals. So let's say you want to write an academic book. And then you also want to write academic papers. And then maybe you need to lecture and teach. And then maybe you want to go to conferences. And then maybe you want to start a business on the side as well. It's just that there isn't enough water to go around to achieve all these goals. Now let's rewind this process and pour back all the time and water back into the jar. And let's imagine that instead of these five goals that you're pursuing at the same time, you're only going to focus on one or two things that are the absolute key to achieve your long-term vision and your long-term academic success. So instead of all of these, we're going to get rid of the side business, we're going to get rid of the conferences, and we're going to get rid of the lecturing or minimize it as much as possible. This leaves us with just two jars and we can pour water into the academic writing book that you're going to do and even more water into writing papers. And there is even some water left here, which means you have time and energy to pursue your hobbies, meet your friends or just work less. That way your productivity skyrockets. So that's why you should strive for less and you'll achieve more. Now, brutally honest advice number two, learn to say no. Early in my career as a PhD student or an early career researcher, I was really afraid to say no. I thought that if I declined a request from my supervisor, my colleagues or my boss, I would really disappoint them. I was also afraid that I would miss out on all these great academic opportunities that were being presented to me. So at one point I was lecturing at the university, writing two, three papers a year, or at least trying to, starting my own business, going to five conferences a year, writing a course book for teaching English. All these activities seemed incredibly important and I couldn't bring myself to say no to anything. But I was so busy that I had to cut corners in each of these goals just to keep up. Think of it like the sun with the sun rays going out in all directions. So each ray might warm you up a little bit, but on its own it doesn't really carry that much energy and power. But if you put a magnifying glass in front of one of those rays and concentrate all that energy into a tiny spot, the ray will even burn through paper. That's when I realized that I had to start saying no. I gave up my lecturing job. I stopped going to conferences. I finished the course book for teaching English that I was working on and declined any future requests that were coming my way to promote the book or to write more course books. I even stopped publishing papers myself. All in order to go all in on this one thing, which for me was helping PhD students and researchers publish papers in Q1 Scopus Index journals. And guess what happened? The business that I was starting at that time went from barely having any clients to in the last four years, 850 plus clients. 
from a mediocre product that delivered subpar results, we went to a service that in the last 12 months allowed our clients to publish papers every two weeks. From clients complaining, we went to an incredibly high satisfaction rate and a rating of 4.7 on Trustpilot. So if you truly want to be the best and beat 99% of other researchers, you truly need to say no to things. Brutally honest advice number three, you need to redefine productivity. Most PhD students and researchers equate productivity with being busy. The more hours you work, the more words you write, the more tasks you clear off your plate, the more productive you feel. But this is precisely the wrong way to view productivity. Simply put, if we look at what productivity is, productivity equals output divided by input. In other words, the more output you get, i.e. published papers for example, per unit of time and effort, which is your input, the higher your productivity. This means that actually the more hours you work and the greater effort you exert, the less productive you are. Look, and I don't mean to say that you should stop working altogether, but if you really care about research productivity and preserving your sanity, you need to stop thinking about productivity in terms of the hours that you put in. True productivity is only achieved through leverage. You put less in and you get way more out. In other words, someone who writes 500 words in two hours is four times as productive than someone who writes 500 words in eight hours because productivity equals output divided by input. Therefore, rather than maximize the number of hours or the efforts that you put in, you need to maximize your output per unit of effort or per unit of time. This is what is called leverage. And as Archimedes famously said, give me a place to stand and a lever long enough and I'll move the world. So how do you achieve more leverage? Essentially, you can get it through three Ps, proficiency, process, and people. So brutally honest research paper writing advice number four is to sharpen your ax. And that's the first way you're gonna get leverage through proficiency or through more skills. Here's brutally honest truth. The reason why you don't publish three or more papers in each year in Q1 index journals is because you lack that skill, you lack proficiency. But here's the surprisingly bright reality. Publishing three or more papers in Q1 Scopus index journals will be infinitely easier if you become more proficient in it. That's why you need to sharpen your skills or sharpen your ax. So you need to identify what skills specifically about publishing research papers is the biggest bottleneck right now, and then commit to becoming more proficient at that specific skill. For example, you can take a free online course on Coursera or Udemy or find it at your university. You can read a really good book on that specific skill. You can watch a YouTube video, listen to a podcast and commit to at least 20 hours of deliberate learning and deliberate practice to sharpen that specific skill. And just by sharpening your skills, we've seen clients reduce the time it takes them to submit a paper to a Q1 journal from six months to just four weeks. And that's a 600% increase in productivity. Here's another brutally honest truth. The reason why you don't publish three or more papers every single year in Q1 journals is that you lack a proven repeatable process, a standard operating procedure, if you will. Most researchers and PhD students will write each paper completely from scratch in fits and starts at random hours and days in random places. All this means the result is completely unpredictable and up to chance. On the other hand, if you systematize the whole process of publishing research papers from A to Z, from how you conceive the research idea, through how you conduct your study, write it up, submit your paper, you will be churning out papers one after another. In fact, one of our clients, Helen, did and wrote a systematic review from scratch in just 42 days, even though she had never done a review paper before. How did she do that? By following a standard operating procedure that we showed her 
on how to publish a review paper. While most researchers take on average six or more months to do a systematic literature review, Helen did it in just six weeks. That's a 400% increase in productivity without working more hours. So commit to at least one hour a week to developing a standard operating procedure, a process for each step of the publishing journey. In the long run, you will achieve infinitely more for each hour of input by following a proven process. And that gives you true leverage over other researchers. And if you want to, you can simply copy and paste some of our proven processes for free. Head to our free community, the link is in the description, and go to the classroom. In the classroom, you will find standard operating procedures for finding research gaps, for honing high impact research topics, writing an introduction, and more. Now, the third way in which you can get incredible leverage and achieve much more output for less input is through people. This can be by delegating your work to others. For example, if you're a professor, your masters and PhD students can do a lot of the heavy lifting on the papers for you. If you guide them properly, assuming that let's say you have 10 students, you could in theory get 10 hours of output for just one hour of your input, which means you're 10 times as productive as other researchers. You can also gain people leverage by surrounding yourself with the right people. Think of any top achievers in any discipline, sports, business, writing, music, they all have amazing mentors, advisors, and coaches. And the most progress I've ever made in my life was through having the right mentor. Thanks to my PhD supervisor, I was able to finish my degree in just three years with three published papers. And thanks to my first business mentor, I went from no clients in six months to 20 new clients every single month. That's 120 times improvement. And perhaps that's not typical, but what if you could just get 10 times more out of your hours? 10 times your productivity by finding the right mentor. So commit to finding that right person right now. Now, none of this will help unless you implement the next step. So my brutally honest research paper writing advice number seven is that you need to be willing to sacrifice short-term gains for long-term leverage. Let me explain. Most researchers are caught up in the daily grind working 50 or 60 hours a week to publish or perish. And this leads to two clear problems with trying to gain leverage, work less and to publish more. Problem number one is just you don't have time to try to gain leverage by tapping into the three P's of proficiency, processes, and people. And problem number two, you fear that if you drop any of these tasks that you're currently working on 50 or 60 hours a week to focus on gaining leverage, you will perish rather than publish. So you end up a slave to your current research routine, working ever longer hours and feeling increasingly overwhelmed. And this is precisely what is often called the leverage gap. The initial time and sacrifice it takes to gain true leverage and skyrocket your productivity. Think of it like this. So imagine two lumberjacks cutting trees in the same forest. They toil away day in, day out, doing back-breaking work. And throughout the weeks, their axes have gotten more and more blunt. So every day they need to exert more energy and spend more time to cut the same number of trees. But at the same time, they, they cannot really stop to sharpen their axe because they need to continue cutting trees in order to make money. But one day, one of them bravely decides to stop the daily grind. He goes to the best axe specialist in town and get his axe fixed and sharpened. When he goes back to work, his newly sharpened axe cuts through the wood like knife through butter. And while he starts 10 trees behind the other lumberjack, he quickly overtakes him and finishes work early. He uses that newly gained time to work on his axe swings, which gives him further leverage. He can now cut twice as many trees in a day as his colleagues. This is a 2x increase in productivity. So now he uses that cash surplus from cutting more trees to hire and train two new lumberjacks, giving them the sharpest axes and the best axe swing skills possible. So now he's essentially gained six times more productivity, all because he was willing to jump the leverage gap, sacrifice the short-term gain in, in order to gain long-term leverage. So 
a question to you is which short-term gains are you willing to sacrifice in order to gain long-term leverage and publish more papers while working less? Brutally honest research writing advice number eight, your research topic sucks. Here's the harsh truth. Most research topics are like airplane meals, bland, reheated, served on plastic limitations of a real meal in a real restaurant. These were my research topics during my PhD journey as well. I followed the crowd of other researchers tweaking their ideas ever so slightly by finding an unexplored region where to conduct my study or addressing a teeny tiny limitation of previous studies. Can this get you published? Sure. Can this get you published regularly in Q1 journals so you become an authority in your field and get tenure? No. According to research by Wang, Song and Barbasi, published in journal Science, the perceived importance and relevance of your research topic is their best predictor of the long-term impact your paper will make as measured by the paper citations. That's why you need to look for truly innovative and impactful research ideas that other researchers in your field just cannot see. How can you do that? Well, you can get a full step-by-step -step process for that in our free community. The link is in the description. Go to the community, head to the classroom, and then you will see a module on finding high-impact research topics. Brutally honest research paper writing advice number nine is that the real art is to express complex ideas in simple terms. After giving feedback on about 100 academic texts every single month for three years to our clients at Academic English Now, I've noticed that most researchers and PhD students tend to overcomplicate simple ideas to the point where the, these ideas become nearly incomprehensible. So the advice is to do the opposite, to express complex ideas in simple terms. How does that work in practice? Well, for example, when one word is sufficient, don't use 10 words. Let's take a look at these example sentences. As the world grapples with the escalating impacts of climate change, the call for urgent action to encourage and foster environmentally sustainable behaviors is more important than ever. Now, this sentence is completely grammatically correct. It's also very academic, but it can really be simplified, which will make the message stand out much more. So let's compare this to a simplified and more concise version. As the world grapples with the escalating impacts of climate change, there is an urgent need to encourage and foster environmentally sustainable behaviors. So my brutally honest research writing advice to you is this, using more and fancier words doesn't make your text clearer. It just creates redundancy. So commit to being as precise and as concise as you possibly can. The real art is to express complex ideas in simple terms. Now that you've digested these eight years of research paper writing advice, I think what we need to do is help you to develop a real system to writing papers. And the next video gives you four simple research hacks to regularly publish your papers in Q1 journals. And you can watch it right here.